The unexpected nature of the pregnancy announcement caught her off guard. Kate looked at the test results and couldn't believe what she saw. Her meeting with Christopher had been short-lived. They had decided it would just last one evening. Now that she was aware that she was pregnant, Kate sobbed over the result and was unsure of what to do. Her ambitions of securing a prominent internship were jeopardized now that she could have to raise a child, since she was about to graduate from college. As Kate waited for her mother to get home and reveal everything, her head ached. Unexpectedly, her mother urged Kate not to contemplate having an abortion and offered to assist in raising her grandson, even with her mother's encouragement. Kate was torn. She hated the thought of giving up her job goals to care for a child alone because she had never expected to become a mother so quickly. Christopher withdrew himself when he found out he was going to be a father. Kate battled the emotional upheaval of her circumstances even though she pledged to keep him out of her life. In the end, she gave in to her mother's arguments and decided against having an abortion. She started to regret things as time went on especially when it was too late to turn back. Though encouraging, Kate's mother had hoped for a grandchild when her son Shane was born. Shane came healthy and thriving, even though the ultrasound readings were initially misread. Nevertheless, Kate struggled to balance parenthood and her profession and threw herself into work as soon as she gave birth. Growing up in the loving care of his grandma, Shane was a peaceful, laid-back child who never caused any problems for his family. Kate's mother tried her best to show him love and attention even though he didn't have his mother's consistent presence. After her kid reached six, Kate started traveling for work on a regular basis. On one such occasion, her mother broke the terrible news that Shane had suffered a spinal injury after falling off a garage roof, though any mother's instinct would have demanded that she take quick action and support her child. Kate remained distant her heart unmoved despite the seriousness of the situation. Kate put finishing her business commitments ahead of rushing home. When she finally came back on the fifth day, her son was beside her in the hospital room, thin and worn out. Kate remained distant at the doorway, unaffected by Shane's pitiful grin and attempt to reach out to her. Tearfully, Shane muttered, I'm sorry, I love you, but his mother's icy attitude remained unchanged. Knowing the bleak outlook without additional medical confirmation, Kate and her mother exited the room. He might never walk again, according to Grandma, as Kate's mother urged her to think about putting him in a crippled orphanage. She warned her that caring for him would be so taxing that she would have to give up her profession. With her head lowered in resignation, Kate made her response crystal obvious. The following day, Kate turned Shane over to the hospital leaving all the required paperwork behind. While the nurses looked on with disapproval, authorities warned her, but she adamantly denied any wrongdoing, saying she had to go on another business trip soon and couldn't spare the time to talk. Feel free to handle him whatever you choose. I will not be weighed down. While Kate made her declaration, I'm too young and beautiful to waste my life on diapers and caretaking. A brief pang of regret consumed her when she briefly glimpsed the gravity of her decision to leave her own son. Knowing that the nurse had told her kid that his mother wouldn't be returning, she never looked back, even though she heard his sobbing, possibly on purpose, as a strategy to garner sympathy. Kate braced herself for any internal conflict by severing all connections to her feelings. Mommy, I'm sorry. Please don't abandon me. Yes, I am able to walk. Just as Kate strode away, Shane's cries for help resounded for a moment before disappearing into thin air. Despite living at the handicapped orphanage, Shane had a hard time making friends. Caregivers tried to make him feel more comfortable, but he stayed distant, sitting quietly by the window for hours on end, waiting for his grandma or mother to come get him. For some reason, he was under the impression that they had just dropped him off in the hospital to wait for him to get well. Neither his mom nor grandma brought him home after months of treatment for his back that showed no signs of recovery. He begged God to bring them back together every night, with tears marking his cheeks when he pleaded for his mother's return. An unexpected ray of hope appeared for the orphanage in the form of a trained massage therapist who specialized in treating children with similar conditions. He sometimes gave free sessions to the public known for his amazing cures that even the terminally sick were able to experience.
being chosen for therapy was a stroke of luck for Shane, he was so committed that he painstakingly followed all of the treatment's directions, and eventually, the benefits began to show, despite the poor odds. One can overcome them with sheer tenacity and willpower, it took Shane 16 years to be able to support himself alone once more, he had realized by that point that his mother could have walked without him. After spending numerous hours studying for interviews, Shane was able to graduate from college, finish his internship, and get a job offer from a respectable company, even though he hadn't slept in days. He kept his cool, she told him, the boss is waiting for you, a female secretary. After a long inhalation, Shane pounded on the door and stepped into the office, sitting in the boss's chair was a man in a pricey suit who said, good morning, for an instant, Shane felt a twinge of familiarity in his eyes, as if they had crossed paths when he was younger, good morning, Shane said with a courteous smile, my portfolio mock-ups and resume are here for you to peruse. After relinquishing the folder containing the documents, Shane sat down as directed. After looking over Shane's resume, the man motioned for him to have a seat. As Shane found a comfortable position, the sound of an opening door in the office caught his ear. In an instant of bewilderment, he whirled around to witness a woman walking in, sending all the papers she was holding tumbling to the floor. For a few seconds, her mouth hung open when she peered at Shane, no matter where he was he would still be able to identify that face. Shane got up from his seat and walked over to assist collect the papers, acting as though he hadn't noticed her reaction, it was the courteous thing to do, but it said a lot about how he had changed from the vulnerable youth she knew before, even his mother pretended not to know who her son was, but her quivering fingers showed how she really felt, Kate, are you alright, the boss said. And Shane returned to his seat where he relaxed, it was clear to Shane they were very close because of the kindness in his voice, even though his mother hadn't felt a maternal urge in 16 years, Shane was still scared that she may try to convince the boss not to hire him, and she reassured the boss, much to his relief, saying, yes, everything is fine. As the supervisor continued to ask questions, Shane responded with conviction and resolve, my apologies for the delay in presenting myself. Shane said, give us some more background and information about yourself, since we place a premium on family ties here at work, I'm curious to hear about everyone's backgrounds, feel free to keep it to yourself if it's too sensitive for you to share. In Shane's mind, this must indicate that he had finally landed the job, anxieties gripped his hands, while silently going over the paperwork, Kate kept her mouth shut, it seems she was also meant to be the one to lead the interview. The boss gave Shane a knowing nod, I've hired you, give us some background, please, starting with, if you insist, Shane continued, my life hasn't exactly been a bed of roses, but then again, none of our lives are perfect, allow me to share my tale with you. My mom didn't want me, and I was never introduced to my dad, to this day, I have no idea why mother decided to bring me into this world, I had a fall from a garage roof when I was six years old. As a child, I recall my grandma warning a neighbor not to be distracted when she spoke with them, and as an adult, I was enticed by older boys to go up to the roof, I hurt my spine after falling on the roof because it was too slick, they continued on ahead. Someone informed me I would never walk again, I assumed my mom was furious because she didn't come over for a long, I longed for her embrace, her kiss, and her pardon, even when she did show up. She was completely ineffective, after that, the nurse assured me that she would never return, a son who was clumsy was not what she wanted, she never came back after I yelled, sobbed, pleaded for forgiveness, and said I would never bother her again, fortunately. A genuine miracle worker entered my life at that time, he massaged people and gave them exercise advice, my mother needed me to get up again, so I followed his orders to the letter. I knew she didn't want me when I succeeded, though, after that, I made up my mind to get serious about my studies and eventually become an accomplished professional, in this updated chapter. I've done my best to stay true to the story's spirit while expressing Shane's feelings and experiences through the use of new language and sentence patterns, Shane's teeth were clenched, the recollection of his mother leaving him piercing like a cut, 
he looked up and saw tears welling up in Mr. Roberts' eyes. Mr. Roberts shook his head, wiping away a tear, and Kate shattered the pen she was holding by accident. Kate excused herself politely. Not bringing up the woman who had been in the office, Shane assured the boss that he would begin work the next morning as they continued their conversation. Shane grinned and walked out of the office after saying goodbye and thanked him for the talk. Shane ran into his mother outside, on the street close to the building. He was standing next to her, staring at her. He said, Mom, did you recognize me? Desperately, the woman started shaking her head. Please refrain from speaking with Mr. Roberts. My bond with him is just starting to get better, because of my previous sins. I can't afford to lose the position I've yearned for, she begged. Shane did not take his eyes off of her, so, you admit it was a mistake. I acknowledge it, but I have no regrets. You would not have been able to learn to walk again if I had kept you at home with me. I carried out my obligation. Above all, you ought to be appreciative, she urged. Please, don't say anything to Mr. Roberts. Shane shook his head in disbelief and turned to head for his car. For the past two weeks, Shane had been employed at Mr. Roberts' company and had occasionally run into his mother, even though she frequently avoided having direct interactions with Shane. She handled him like any other employee, making no fuss. Shane knew the old woman he saw one day near the workplace right away. His grandmother stood nervously scanning the doors while gripping the bag handles tightly and pressing her fingers against them. She saw the young man and her eyes filled with sorrow. Shane, can we talk? She said as she walked up to him, softly. Yes, of course, was his response. Hi there, should we go for a stroll, maybe to a coffee shop? Shane recognized he had long since moved over his bitterness at his mother and grandmother, who had abandoned him. As they drove to the closest cafe, he had moved on from his prior grudges and desire for vengeance. His granny let out a deep breath. I'm to blame. I fear I wouldn't be able to raise you. After I talked Kate out of having an abortion, I got sick. Although you were born, I thought I wanted a female. Kate didn't want you. I discovered when it was all over. The first day she didn't show up, and I was too frail to take care of a child with special needs. Please pardon me. I wish I had known. There's no need to apologize. Shane comforted her. What's done is done. His grandma went on, startling him with her words. Shane, please don't wreck Kate's life. She sacrificed her personal happiness to pursue her career, giving up everything. Would you kindly not tell your father that she is your mother? Shane was taken aback. His thoughts were racing. This parent she mentioned, who was he? Was he employed by the company? His grandma pondered. Perhaps things would have turned out differently if Kate hadn't abandoned Christopher. You could have possibly started a family. Christopher was never interested in finding out what happened to Kate. Had he been aware of his son's existence sooner, he would have pleaded with Shane not to endanger her career, as it was already lost. There were beads of sweat on Shane's forehead, and he could feel his body quivering. He worried that Mr. Roberts was really his father because he saw a reflection of him in the mirror every day. His father was his supervisor. I value our conversation, Shane ended by saying. It seems like we've reached our conclusion, though, if Mr. Roberts needs something, he may decide on his own. Standing up suddenly, Shane flung the tea money onto the table and bolted. It saddened him that his grandma had gone looking for him just to tell him to be silent about his dad. His father had no idea what to expect from a son, so he could now comprehend his mother's fears. A fortnight elapsed, sitting in Mr. Robert's office, they discussed a project. And he was unsure whether he should tell Mr. Roberts the truth or not. He knew it would hit him hard. Out of nowhere, Mr. Roberts clapped his hands and said, You're like a son to me. Shane felt him pat him on the shoulder. You seem to have an innate understanding of who I am, almost like a mind reader. Maybe we were just meant to be together. Father, you have no clue how near to the truth you are, Shane responded hesitantly. Before he could intervene, the words spilled out. Mr. Roberts's mouth dropped open in astonishment, followed by a gentle laugh. Your comedy is spot on. It makes me happy that we've become such good friends.
Remorseful for disclosing the truth in the absence of proof of their familial relationship, Shane remained silent. He questioned whether it was worthwhile to attempt to repair their friendship. Everyone has to face their own kind of punishment at some point. Shane certainly didn't want to betray his mom. Shane was framed a month later, an unexpected act of betrayal. It was obviously his mom's doing, but he couldn't understand why. Why is this necessary for her? Their connection had remained hidden from everyone. Maybe she was afraid Mr. Roberts would see the similarity and find out the truth. That tragic day, Mr. Roberts scolded Shane in front of everyone. It never occurred to me that you would divulge our innovations to our rivals. I put my faith in you like a son, and this is your way of saying thank you. That was Shane sounding so desperate. I didn't do anything like that. Roberts said, leave, in a chilly manner. I never want to see you again. And you're saying my wife was the one who did it, only you, me, and her beheld them, Mr. Roberts went on to say. It was pointless for Shane to try to justify himself. His claim was disbelieved, silently. He packed his possessions and departed, leaving no trace behind. Mr. Roberts came home early from work two weeks after that, with a stealthy entrance. He listened in on his wife's phone conversation. Yesterday, Mom. I noticed him hanging around by the office, according to his wife. Shane was probably just waiting for someone. Maybe he wanted to speak with his dad. Christopher will forsake me if he discovers I abandoned our child and that he is his son. She admitted that she couldn't handle the thought of having her goals derailed due to Shane's looks. He meant the world to me. I had feelings for him. If it weren't for a generous job offer and the opportunity to send crucial information to competitors, I never would have thought to agree to reunite with him when I was younger. By son did she mean whom, out of nowhere, Christopher came over to Kate, grabbed her hand, and yanked her in his direction, making her face him. It was as if the phone had slipped her fingers. He yelled out, Where's my son? Reasons were stutter spoken by the woman. Christopher, I think you have gotten it wrong. My relationship was something I was bragging to my mom about. Can someone tell me where I can find my son? Tell me the truth. When I find out the truth, I will make you feel bad about it. Still stumbling, the lady went on, as he raised a menacing palm towards Kate. Christopher let out a low roar. Who? She asked at last, bringing her head down. Shane. It was as if a shock had just passed through Christopher. Emotion made his entire body quiver. His son Shane had a troubled upbringing. He became visibly distressed. Tell me you didn't send our child to a special needs orphanage just for career reasons, said he. With a piercing cry, Kate yanked her hand away. The weight was too much for me, so I gave him away. I am also departing from you. I've had enough of constantly worrying about you. Christopher let out a sour laugh. Dash away. After you betrayed our project, do you believe our rivals will welcome you with open arms? The litigation is already being handled by my counsel. The fines will be so high that your beloved competitors will be unable to pay their workers. Plus, no one will trust my recommendation to recruit you for a respectable job following your dismissal. I want everything of yours out of my apartment in an hour. Christopher then made a dramatic exit, despite the woman's threats and insults. He paid her no mind, being with his kid whose acceptance had moved Christopher to tears almost immediately, made Christopher feel an overpowering sense of shame. Christopher paused for a considerable amount of time outside Shane's flat door upon his arrival. With all the remorse he felt towards his adult son, how could he face him? How could he apologize for falsely accusing him of stealing or seek forgiveness for a troubled childhood? Christopher mustered up the bravery to ascend to the third story and rapped on the door. Shane opened it after a few minutes, his expression betraying his surprise. Mr. Roberts, what are you doing here? inquired the man. Now that I know, I still don't know how to ask for your forgiveness. I just don't get it. I deeply regret my behavior towards you, my son. If it is possible, I ask that you pardon me for everything. Christopher expressed his ignorance as he spoke his expression betraying his true emotions. I have no ill will toward you, father. Just relax, Shane reassured calmly. In one embrace, Christopher and Shane became one, with one other's backs. They could take on any obstacle. After watching the story above, 
Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's story. See you next time.